Well, gang, you might want to get your Takis for this one. And while you're at it, guys, so hide your kids, hide your wives. Stop rolling those fat doobies, man. And like the video if you love your mama. Shout out to Barry Step. Let's get down to it. We'll How does it feel to be saved by elite US Special Forces? Within minutes, all nine pirates were dead. In 2011, she had been taken hostage by Somali pirates when, under the cover of darkness, a Navy SEAL team parachuted into the desert and ruthlessly hunted her captors. In her own Holy. words, I was on a mat trying to sleep when I heard a faint scratching noise. One of the bandits, nicknamed Helper, heard it too. And then I saw this look of sheer terror on Helper's face, and the room erupted in gunfire. I thought, okay, well, this is it. This really Man. is the end. I felt all these hands on me, and I tried to protect myself. Then I heard my name. It was an American accent. I couldn't compute. They said, Jessica, we're here to take you home. I froze, and one of them picked me up and started running. At one point, they thought they heard something, so they asked me to lie down on the ground, and then they made a circle around me to protect me. It felt like I was the most important thing in the world to them. They were all ready to take a bullet for me. In the helicopter, they handed me a folded American flag, and I just started to cry. At that moment, I had never in my life been so proud and so very happy to be an American. Hearing a story like this just makes me long for the days of American pride and patriotism. We just don't see this kind of response from our government anymore. The no man left behind mantra was dropped a long Long yeah. Time ago. Just yeah, like this sounds like a fairy tale, but if real, this is a um, amazing story. Just look at what they're doing to the people in North Carolina. Pathetic. Telekinesis. What child? you mean you gonna move the paper with your mind? I'm gonna just move it with my mind. How you gonna move the paper with your mind? You be sounding crazy. There you go with yeah. that crazy stuff again. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like how you gonna do that? No, nah, man, let, let the let the kid actually control it with its mind, man. Do not suppress his powers or her powers. You can't move the paper with my mind. How you gonna move the paper with your mind, London? But I can move it with my mind. Let me see, cause I, don't, I think you're tripping. Yeah, we think you're tripping. She thinks you're tripping, you're I don't do think you're tripping. What the hell? You're not doing that. <laughs> you yeah, are man. not doing oh. <laughs> Yeah, do not, do not, mama, don't suppress her. <laughs> she is not doing it. <laughs> Don't suppress his abilities, though. Oh, my baby. Oh, that's scary. Oh, oh no. Okay, no. bring it back. Bring it back. No, bring it back. No, no, no. I can't do this. I can't do this. <laughs> Yo, bring it back. This new generation of star children are going to change this world. What? It's a... So, whose baby is that? Oh, shit. Whose baby is that? Nightmare fuel. You guys believe that video or what? Pots, rants, I don't know discussion. how that was pulled off. The reaction from her mama sure seems legit. She acted like she was genuinely surprised by what was going on. I don't know if I'm being fooled by some simple trick that I'm just not thinking of at the moment, but I feel like we likely had this capability at one time, and it wouldn't be outside the realm of possibility as far as I'm concerned that we start seeing this ability resurface. Okay, like, I'm gonna try my abilities, okay? So I'm summoning all of you guys to drop a like on the video. Let's see if that works. And, and while we're at it, guys, if you do use Instagram, I would love to have you there link is in the pin comment let's see if i can also like pull this off or not i'm joking around man shout out to you guys for being here i let's get let's get back to let's get back to it boo boo and if this were going to resurface, it would only make sense that it would resurface in a child, someone who hasn't been beat into submission by the world yet. This Facts. is the most Facts. lawless island on earth. It's illegal for anyone, including the, 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 the North Sentinel Island, right? It looks like that. Law enforcement to go there, as many attempts have been made, and eventually we just gave up. It's called North Sentinel Island, yeah. off the coast of India, and it's home to one of the last uncontacted tribes in the world, the Sentinelese. And we managed to catch a glimpse of what life looks like for them now uncontacted try for context like if you uh if you think aliens are not real well this island is gonna make you believe because it's like a different planet on its own you know that island different planet lives are more common than you think with about 100 remaining in small pockets around the world nomadic hunter gatherers who never adapted to modern civilization and have been living the same way for literally tens of thousands of years most of them live in the amazon rainforest in south america and may occasionally come across signs of modern society like explorers or equipment left behind by them what makes north sentinel island so dangerous is that it's a remote island surrounded by the ocean which is all their inhabitants have known for their entire history which according to studies is about 
60,000 years and sits over 500 kilometers away from its closest mainland civilization, Myanmar. Although its closest neighbor, the nearby Indian yeah, territory of the Andaman Islands, is just about 30 kilometers away. There have been a few incidents of outsiders visiting them, and it almost never ends well. Anthropologists have been dying to get a closer look at them, but anytime boats or helicopters get close to the island, they get attacked by spears and arrows by the Sentinelese. First recorded instance was in 1867, when an Indian merchant ship was wrecked on the island and the passengers were immediately attacked by bows and arrows. They managed to fend themselves off for a whole week before they were rescued. In 1974, a film crew shooting a documentary visited the island with gifts, from which the Sentinelese were caught on camera for the very first time. But they still attacked them when they got too close. On Google Maps, you can see a transport ship that got wrecked on the island in 1981, potentially kickstarting an Iron Age for these people. Then, in 1991, the first ever peaceful contact was made by anthropologist Tien Pandit, who sent gifts of coconuts to the island for a whole 24 years before the tribe finally accepted him. They actually ended up what? having quite a few friendly close encounters. Bro! You give me coconut- You just give me one coconut for free? We- We friends! I'm gonna be like, damn! Damn! Yeah, let me buy you this, let me buy you that! 24 years and then you accept him? Man, come on, bro. Encounters with each other over the next several weeks. And to this day remains the closest we've ever gotten to befriending them because they sure switched up the next time we came back. In 2006, two men <laughs> fell asleep up. in a fishing boat that drifted too close to the island and the Sentinelese attacked and ended their lives with arrows in their sleep. After this Man. incident, a five kilometer exclusion zone was made around the island, making it illegal for anyone to visit. As recently as 2018, a missionary illegally visited the island on a fishing boat to spread Christianity it. among the tribe. He tried multiple times to make peaceful contact once again and even had his bible shot by an arrow recording it all down in his journal which was recovered from his boat but then he found out exactly why this island is off limits he wrote his last journal entry of woke up after a fairly restful sleep heading to island now i hope this isn't my last notes but if it is to god be the glory before going on to write a goodbye message to his family reading heading onto the island and was never seen again. Presumed either captured and or ended by the tribe. Rest in peace, yeah, John Allen Child. Around the same story. time, never before seen drone footage taken deeper inland of the island was captured up close for the very first time, showing us how they live. Their shelters, pathways, and even a large dome that could serve as a marketplace, a theater, or even a religious site of sorts. And also captured the Sentinelese people themselves in their natural habitat. Each one of them curiously looking up at the drone, which they probably thought was a demon or maybe even a god that may become part of their culture's mythology in the centuries to come. The people of North Sentinel yeah. Island fascinate the crap out of me. The yeah. fact that we still have people out there. To that Yeah, bro, like the, the second I saw like the shape of the island, I knew immediately it's like North High, North Sentinel Island. When I first heard it uh, or heard about it, I was fascinated by that too, because it's uh, it's on our own planet, right? Like, yeah, so that's like an alien planet on its own today who are living like primitive cave dwellers in 2024 is mind-blowing and yep. i had no idea that they estimate that there's over a hundred of these uncontacted tribes left now i know that just contacting them proposes a big problem in itself but i can't help but wonder what ancient knowledge are they potentially holding on to that could answer some of our greatest mysteries hey if you're enjoying this video know, right? and you like this type of content i post a new one just like it every day monday like and subscribe like and subscribe like and subscribe yeah, you deserve to hear this this guy looks like me, Kevin. Something is going on. I'm a truck driver, all okay. right? I, I have a 53-foot step deck. I've been trucking for about two and a half years. I have a YouTube channel. You can verify that on Baby Lion Hotshot. Got it. Done. Usually, in a disaster situation, it is payday for truckers. We look for that hurricane. We look for that ice storm. There's generators coming to you. There from uh, there's stuff coming out of military bases. There is excavators, skid steers, bulldozers, uh, tree tree trimming equipment, pumps like water but pumps to now, pump huh? water out of places that have been flooded. There's no loads on the load board coming to you within 125 miles of Asheville. It's called truck stop. This is where I find all my loads. Chicago, Illinois, up at the top. Within 250 miles of Chicago is where I'm gonna pick up. The second the second is the uh, destination. So it goes origin, destination, watch. See, drop off location. Let's do city. Stay safe, y'all. Like if you're in the affected North zone. North Carolina, click it. 
Boom. All right. These are all $1.40 a mile loads, $1.39. That was posted yesterday. I mean, there's nothing. There's nothing. These are loads that, that you, you wouldn't even... So the big story from the government side so far has been that they won't allow anyone to give donations unless they come from an approved vendor. But those vendors Bruh. aren't sending anything anyways. It looks like the game plan here for the U.S. government is to just let all these people perish and then go in and scoop up the remains and then just wait for the public to stop talking about it. This is the exact same thing that happened in Hawaii. And those people still haven't gotten any justice or even a logical answer as to why their homes were stolen from them. I just don't see this playing out any different. Never before have we been in such dire need of a change of leadership. This That's is what insane, most bro. Americans innocently put into their bodies these days and most alarmingly into the bodies of their children. Yeah. And it's no coincidence that Yeah, Cap and Crutch, bro. You know, like cereals and all that. I mean, it sounds like that they are healthy, right? They always promote it as healthy, but they're not healthy. Americans die earlier than Canadians or Germans or Italians or Japanese. I'm in Canada. No try no <laughs> <laughs> no flex, but uh, I'm in Canada. Let me know where you guys at, but that's wild. So 80, uh, okay, so can, uh, US is 76. Canada, 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 Canada. Okay, there's no mention here, but uh, country average is 82. Japan is what? 80 something. Japanese or Koreans or Australians or. And, and Japanese, by the looks of it, they spend the least amount of uh, dollars on health right per capita us is the most but us is the least i mean 76 is still good but but imagine you're 70 right now right so i i get that and some people it's it doesn't mean that you're gonna die at 76 some people die young some people die at like 100 at 100 but there but you know the japanese diet is usually very considered very good and i'm assuming it's more than 84 so gotta be like somewhere 86 maybe right uh there was an island that i was hearing about like in japan where there are hundreds of people and mostly all of them live up to 100 plus years easy uh so they were studying their diets and yeah their diets are the best and they always try to move their body and they keep make sure that they're not depressed and the way you get not the way you don't get depressed is by always having like a goal right uh always uh taking small things and making them big like it's the, the joy is always in the small things right uh, family relationships, right? Like relationships, family, uh, working out, right? That's like a natural way of getting dopamine. You don't need like all these uh, pharmaceuticals. You don't need all these pills, man. I get it. Like for some people, of course, they need it, but it's very few in comparison, right? Like, yeah, whenever doc doctor puts you on meds, man, just research, man, research. If it's if it can be solved by you working out, you don't need it, man. You know what I mean? most but i'm not a medical professional just yeah it, it does not apply to everybody of course some people got real conditions and you need the meds for sure any other comparable country and it wasn't always that way until the early 1990s our life expectancy was the same or better than other developed countries and then suddenly more and more americans began suffering from chronic diseases from obesity cancer diabetes yeah kidney disease, Alzheimer's, and it's on the heart rise. disease, and all kinds of autoimmune diseases. Our maternal mortality rate soared to the highest of any developed country on Earth. Same with infant mortality. Like the frog in the slowly boiling water, we didn't really... Well, uh, <laughs> the, the water is turning, the frog, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, the water is turning. Alex J, man, I think that man was right. They've done studies on it, too. We notice as we After got sicker time. and sicker, we've grown now to accept chronic disease conditions as normal. But now, in 2024, we're finally waking up to this cataclysm and we're asking ourselves, how in the world did this happen? A big part of it is our diet. Restaurants that serve contaminated food are fined or shut down. But when it's the government that approves the poisons in our food, a few people get very, very rich and the toxins end up in every supermarket aisle. Let me show you what I mean. Doritos, Cheez-Its, Cap'n Crunch, Gummy Bears. Everyone knows that these are junk foods, so yep. maybe you wouldn't be too surprised to see that the ingredients include a lot of poisons, including a harmful yellow dye called tetrazine, or yellow dye number five. What you may not know is that this dye was originally made out of the sludge. This you know, I jokingly always, uh, I jokingly started saying, go get your Takis. Maybe you don't want to get your Takis, guys. You know what I'm saying? I, I tried Takis. I only had Takis like twice in my life. And the first time I had was just like a couple of months ago. 
I, I know this might sound like crazy to you guys, but yes, I had it for the first time like a couple of months ago, and man, they were so good, bro. They were so, <laughs> they were busting. I had like one of the spiciest one. I actually got it from like a uh, petrol pump, so yeah they were so good man and after that i was like bro like i need another one i need a yeah man like there's a reason why these types of foods are so addictive but so harmful it's left over when you turn coal into coke for blast furnaces it's called coal tar and i've actually sued many big industries for legacy contamination of oh, coal damn. tar all around the country because it's so toxic and it's so harmful to the environment and human beings a century ago it was just an obnoxious industrial byproduct that everybody was trying to figure out ways to get rid of one of the ways that they did that was by paving roads but then a british chemist figured out that the coal tar could be used to derive fabric dye and if fabric die, why not food? Yeah, food crazy. Food manufacturers Man. and using it to cover up the discoloration of low-quality foods that they wanted to pass off on unsuspecting customers. They didn't know back then that this yellow dye, tartrazine, causes tumors, asthma, developmental delays, neurological damage, ADD, ADHD, hormone disruption, gene damage, anxiety, depression, intestinal injuries yeah well we know it now we've known this for decades that's why tartrazine is heavily restricted in other countries in some countries foods with tartrazine have a warning label that it may cause adhd and contains a source of phenylalanine i cannot even pronounce it produced from genetically modified maize may have an adverse effect on activity you know this is a type of crap that they should teach us in school but they never they would never teach us tartrazine like they should teach us about taxes hey what to put you in your body right because yeah bro like <laughs> you are who you, what you, you are what you eat your body is gonna be with you right so they and taxes are a big part of our life right so they should talk about it they should talk about what to eat what's best for you and all that but now they want to make you like everybody else they want to create drones essentially they want to make uh uh, well, what's the word? Slaves for other people's uh, dreams, their business. Yeah, business people. Yeah, right. That, that's what it is. It's about creating slaves, not healthy and good humans. Children. Today it's made from petroleum, not coal tar. Either way, it's crazy to add this to your kids' favorite foods. It doesn't even change the flavor. This yellow dye isn't just in junk food. It's in the foods that we consider healthy. It's in yeah. everyday kids' snacks like popcorn mac and cheese fruit snacks it's in sports drinks like gatorade and so-called vitamin water it's even added to chicken broth to corn to pickles to mustard and to yogurt and so Man. of course our kids get sick and we lovingly feed them chewable vitamins which have surprise tartrazine and so the cycle continues until the coughs and asthma kick in at which point you go to pick up some cough syrup and yeah you get even that no Tartrazine. I've been picking on what? Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! So it causes like one of the symptoms is cu coughing. So you go pick up the cough syrup, and it has that ingredient too. Man, what the hell, bro? Tartrazine today, but that's just one of at least a hundred chemical poisons that our health agencies allow into our children's food. I can make a video just like this to talk about Red Forty, BHA, BHD, potassium bromate chemical after chemical and on and on and on yeah. if just one of them can cause all of these problems imagine what they're all doing in these. combination that has never been studied if we took all of these chemicals out our nation would get healthier immediately we'd have fewer sick days we'd have better focus we'd have less anxiety our kids would learn more easily we'd lose weight we'd have more energy, we'd have fewer tumors, and longer lives. It's not all dark. Over the past 16 years, the government has banned eight chemical additives that cause cancer, genetic damage, asthma, and many of the other self conditions as- uh, God bless this man, man. Shout out to this man, because like, of course he's causing awareness, so some- Yeah, and I'm making the video causing awareness too, right? So some- This is how the mafia works, essentially. What I mean by this is that this is how it works, where you got awareness and yes somebody is gonna do some about it but 
we gotta start it too, you know, and why we gotta rely on somebody, right? But of course, it gotta be somebody in position of power that can do it, and then you bring it to Congress, gotta prove it, this and that. It takes time, man, it takes time, but... Uh, but but taking a step is uh, better than not taking a step for sure. Starch as he does, and you know what's interesting? All eight of those crucial steps forward in our kids' health were taken under President Trump. But the Democrats, who claim to be all about health care, have stood by watching other countries ban these poisons and make our kids sick. As I'm gonna see, like, if tartrazine, like, is actually banned in Canada or not. Let me see. Hyperactive. I'm sure you guys are gonna be doing the same for your country, too. Let's see. And depressed. They left them on every supermarket shelf in America. They even used your tax money to put them in your kid's school lunch. So they're big food and they're big ag daughters. Well, I guess I was wrong. It says that tartrazine is listed as a permitted food coloring. Oh, one sec. Permitted food coloring in Canada. The majority of the prepackaged foods are required to list all ingredients, including all food additives, such so it's not banned. Which countries has this banned? Sweden, Switzerland, and Norway have withdrawn tartrazine on the grounds of its anaphylactic potential. Shit, man. So it's like. Yeah, so Canada, yeah, whatever, bro. Like, we're in the same boat as you guys, man. Governors probably gave them all that golden handshake and the big money hug, and their big pharma donors probably called them up and thanked them also, because now they're gonna make billions selling Adderall, Prozac, and rescue inhalers. Enough is enough. President Trump and I are gonna stop the mass poisoning of American children. Together, we're gonna make America healthy again. I hope that's true, man. I hope that's true. Change definitely needs to come, man. If this stuff sickens you the way it sickens me, and you finally want to see an end put to all these chemicals in our food, we finally have a way forward. I've never heard a politician talk about this before RFK Jr. Whether this is just a political talking point yeah. or not is yet to be seen. But if it's he's serious about by... taking this on, then hell yeah. It's about hell yeah. time. Hell yeah, hell yeah. I'm someone listening to the masses that are crying out to have this problem resolved. Get in and to be fair though, like as someone who's living in Canada though, like the US uh, elections literally affect the entire world, right? Like, yeah, so <laughs> it's, it, yeah, whatever happens in America, it happens everywhere else. There's a delay for sure, but generally speaking, yeah. So, if the, if this gets banned in the U.S., it's most probably gonna get banned in Canada and other countries afterward. The poisons out of our food supply is definitely a top priority, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, hundred percent. Five minutes to talk to you about geography because we need to understand the scale of what's going on. This is the state of North Carolina. This is the area that's without power still. This is also the state of North Carolina. This yellow outline is the country of Belgium that I've overlaid for scale. Holy. Okay. This is the scale. 230,000 customers without power means households. Based on U.S. Census data, the average household size here is about three, which means we're talking about six to 700,000 people who have not had power for a week. That is an emergency by itself if yeah. you don't have power for a week then if you had food stored in the freezer no you don't if you, you know like uh, i believe a year ago we had like uh i'm in montreal right let me know where you guys had we had like an ice storm yeah so our power was gone for three days and yes i know how it was like yeah yeah thankfully i had some like videos planned so because my mom work is internet related right i work outside too like we got like uh yeah, self-employed, so got like a bunch of like different side hustles there and there. But mostly all my work is on the internet. So I was like, yeah, freaking out, but thankfully had some work done before. So I had to go out, like connect to the Wi-Fi at that point. Like, and I'm talking like a year ago, I did not have like a mobile data plan because I didn't need. So I'm not spending money on stuff that I don't need, right? Uh, God bless, I'm grateful uh, and um, I can afford it right now, I do, but like back then I didn't need, so therefore I didn't. So I would go outside and <laughs> connect to the Wi-Fi, like a public Wi-Fi, yeah. and upload that, upload videos that way, but it was crazy. So we had no power for three days and yeah, that was insane. And some people, of course, uh, like in remote areas, uh, they didn't have power for a solid week. So already some people uh, in North Carolina don't have power for a week and it's still ongoing. That's insane. If you had breast milk, insulin stored in the fridge, no, you don't. You don't get to run your CPAP machine. Three quarters of a million people without power for a that's week. That's insane, yeah. 
should make headline news by itself. But power 100%. outages are unfortunately one of the mildest of problems. Water is also out. Cell coverage is out. If you're seeing people posting from this area, there's a good likelihood they're having to drive miles to do that. And that is if oh, they have a car shit. that wasn't destroyed, yeah. if they can get gas somehow, and if- So no power? Yeah, and then no cellular data either. So people that are inside, they cannot even like surf around and get updates on to what's going on. And they cannot like send out information or ask for help. So they would have to go like far, far away. That That's, yeah, that's, of course, not everybody would be able to do that, right? So that that's truly is insane. If they have roads they can drive miles on. These are the road closures. So they got the road closed too? That's, okay. what the And these hell? roads are not closed because there's some water on them. They're closed because they look like this now. Why was Hurricane right. Helen so dangerous? This times this. That's the scale. The reason the roads look like that is because this is the topography. This is not like a lot of cities where you drive for a half an hour to go get to this. This is the region. This is where people live. When you live in the mountains, you get one road. And they're going to put it wherever they can put it. That's why it's shaped like this. Very often, that's going to be along a river or next to it. When a road looks like this, right? That means yeah. the land looks like this. So when a hurricane decides to go hiking in the mountains, which has never happened in this area before, ever, you're going to get a torrential amount of water and it's gonna be moving very fast because it's moving down a mountain. And this river is going to explode. It's gonna take out this road right here and it's gonna take out this road right here. And then everybody that lives in here is trapped because you're not walking out. Some people are. Some people are putting what they can and their children on their back and hiking out, which is, to be honest, pretty representative of typical Appalachian scrappiness. Anyway, the other thing that's gonna happen is mud because the water is not going to just gently fall down the mountain and go in the river. It is going to get into the earth and the earth is going to become mud and that is incredibly heavy. And the whole mountainside is gonna shear off like a windshield wiper and carry everything with it and put it in the river. And that's why we're seeing the level of destruction we're seeing because roads are not the only thing that is gone. This is not a river, this is a town. What the This is hell? Turning Rock. This is a screenshot from this user. This is what it looked like before. Before? Man. And this is the scale that we're talking about. There are hundreds of small towns in this picture. This is Asheville, this right here. You've heard a lot about Asheville, probably, hopefully. Asheville is not a small remote mountain town. It is a city of 100,000 people. It is the city that you would drive to to go to the doctor if you live in an actual small remote mountain town. And it did get devastated. It did get hit very hard. But part of the reason why you are seeing so much coverage out of Asheville is that you can get there right now. If you're gonna send a news crew to North Carolina, they can just drive into Asheville. And you do not wanna be taking up a helicopter right now just to take pictures because people are still trapped. I do think some news organizations went here for a working lunch and didn't ask anybody if anyone lives up here. So I'm a little frustrated by that, but gradually I think the coverage is developing um the rest of this is going to be very bleak so don't watch oh it. man prayers out for all these people if you're uh affected and somehow you're watching this well god bless you man i hope uh things get easy uh and better for you from here on out if you're already not okay please the mortality counts that you've seen in the tens are irresponsibly optimistic those are the people who've been identified when you find someone's remains washed down a river how do you know where they came from how do you contact their loved ones to get an identification? When the cell towers are down, when the roads are down, when all of those people are still concentrating on trying to get out and trying to get food and water, you're gonna wait. You're gonna wait until the living are taken care of. We have not begun to hear the mortality numbers from this disaster. This is a small country. And it's my mom's small country. And it's yeah. gone. Please pay attention. And the sad part is, if this were a small country and not part of the United States, it's all we'd be hearing about on the news, and we'd be sending relief funds over there ASAP. The federal government acts like it's big brother to the rest of the world, taking on rebuilding efforts, taking in refugees that aren't even refugees, sending humanitarian aid to countries that freaking hate us. But if it's their own people, they're just giving crumbs and told to shut up and deal with it. You do know that yeah, the location that's, of the that, that is wild, though. That is wild. The location of the beast and the harlot. 
harlot of Babylon and the This seems like Hinduism, right? Uh Seven-headed beast is no big secret. It's right there in chapter 17 in the book of Revelation. And that's not uh, if any of you are uh, any Hindus watching, let, let me know. Correct me if I'm wrong, because just just based off of that, like I'm think because in the Hinduism there is like the devil, right? Uh, that has like this many uh, faces. There is Ram. Ram is the good guy, and then uh, there is uh, I'm forgetting the bad guy's name. I'm forgetting the bad guy's name. Next on the trumpet, the woman arrayed in purple. I love how this old Bible tells you what's getting ready to happen, and you know who that is. Yeah, Ravan, 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 that's like the bad guy in Hinduism, right? Verse 9, and here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven Thank you for subscribing, appreciate mountains it. Mountains on which the woman sitteth. And I mean like up to about 20 minutes ago, I used to think that the Vatican was on the seven hills of Rome. But it is up here, and they are over there. But I can tell you that the Temple of Jupiter is on Capitoline Hill right there. Capitoli. And the Temple of Jupiter Bellus is the first name given to the Tower of Babel. That one. So Washington, D.C. was actually Rome, Maryland. And it's built on seven hills. And I always remember that that Capitol is spelled like the other Capitol. Like that one. Just like that building right there. The Roman Capitol Hill. Our capital is holy. Fine. It has its own little harlot right on top of it. Come on, yo! It seems like that we're watching like a different reality, like a different timeline. You could take Google Earth there. Let's go right down to Washington D.C. Go down to the Washington Monument, which is a satanic obelisk that's right at the middle of it. I just honestly threw this in here because I'm so mad at the vice president and her response to the victims of Helene. I don't think this proves she's the Antichrist. I think the Antichrist is going to be someone with charm and intelligence, somebody who can. Sw to be honest, yeah, right, like Antichrist in uh, Christianity, Dajjal in Islam, uh, and yes, you got hints, you got like little things here and there for sure, but I truly do believe that, yeah, because it does say in religion that it's a lot of people are going to believe it's God, you know, a lot of people whenever Antichrist comes, Dajjal comes, uh, Surely there are differences in both religions, of course there are, but there are a lot of similarities uh, and uh, a lot of people are going to be attracted towards it, a lot of people will believe it's God when it's not. So how is that even possible? How do you think like it's going to be able to confuse uh, people? And if you're not a religious people person, that's fine by me, but this is like what's being said in the books, right? You know what I mean? So, the, and if it turns out to be true, I'm, I'm a believer, but I'm just talking as just having a discussion with you guys but if it turns out to be it's true then how is it how the jaw or antichrist is going to be able to gain followers is uh by with the charm and with uh proving to the world that it's god or he's god right but it's he's not essentially is what uh we know guys it's been a pleasure it has been a pleasure Take care of yourselves. Check out this video on the screen. This is the last episode that we've done. If you enjoyed this, you're going to love this one. And I will see you right there.